Alright, so we want to look at a couple theorems today. Uh, first one is Rolle's theorem. And all Rolle's theorem really says is if I have two functional values that are the exact same, so at two different points, and everywhere on that interval between those two points we have a continuous function, then at some point we have to have at least one critical number, at least one point where the function changed from decreasing to increasing, or from increasing to decreasing. Because otherwise, if it didn't, uh, then there's actually no way I could get essentially right back to where I started. So normally the way they do this is dealing with x-intercepts. So they want you to find the x-intercepts of a number, or of a function, and then show that x prime must be zero, or that there must be a critical number somewhere in that interval in between those intercepts. So to find the intercepts, we're going to say, well, that means that that would happen when f of x equals zero. So that means x squared minus 3x plus 2 have to equal zero. That's where I'm going to factor, where factors of 2 that add to negative 3. That would be negative 1 and negative 2 equal zero. That means that x will equal a positive 1 and x will equal a positive 2. So when it says what, or just pretty much to show it, you just need to show, well, there's where it's equal. And then there needs to be some point in between uh, that, that you're guaranteed to have a critical number somewhere in there. So I would say a, a critical number is guaranteed on the interval, uh, on the interval from 1 to 2. I can write that from 1 comma 2, or I can say 1 is less than x is less than 2, something like that. Now, just to show what it is, or then they might say part 2 to say, well, where is that? Is that intercept, or where is that a critical number? Well, to find where the critical number would be, it would be setting f prime equal to 0. f prime x is equal to 0. To take that derivative and find what f prime is. That would be 2x minus 3 equals 0. So that means 3 would equal 2x or that 3 halves, or 1 and a half, equals x. And yes, 3 halves is within that interval, so we're in good shape right there. Now, um, what we normally use Rolle's theorem for is actually a special case called the mean value theorem. And all it says is if we have a continuous function and it's always differentiable on an interval, then this slope here of a secant line will be the same as the slope of a tangent line for some point along this curve. So somewhere along this curve, the secant line and the tangent line um, must be the exact same. So to show you how we'll do something with this, uh, we want to find a value on the interval negative 3 comma 2 uh, where the mean value theorem exists. So to do that, we first need to find the secant line. To do that, I need to take my functional values at each of these two points, f of negative 3 and f of positive 2. When I do f of negative 3, I'm going to get 5 as my answer, and f of positive 2 will be 60 for my functional value. To find the, the slope of the secant line, slope of the secant line, well, I'm going to do the uh, difference of my y values, 60 minus 5, over my difference in the x values. If I did 60 minus 5, I have to do 2 minus a negative 3, or plus a positive 3, which means 55 over 5, or a slope of 11. So what the mean value theorem says is there exists a point somewhere uh, in this interval where my slope is 11. So now we need to find what that is. So I'm going to set f prime of x equal to 11. Well, f prime of x is taking the derivative would be 2x plus 12. So 2x plus 12 must equal 11. When we subtract 12 from both sides, then I should get negative 1 will equal 2x, which means the x value that I get is negative 1 half. So at x equals negative 1 half, my slope uh, of tangent line at that point is the exact same as the secant line of that interval. Let's look at another example. In this one, we're looking, we're looking at the, <coughs> the interval from negative 1 to positive 2. Now here's where things are going to start to get tricky and where they'll try to trip you up. We have to first look, is it continuous and differentiable everywhere in that interval? Well, no, we're going to have a discontinuity because it's a rational function. It's going to be discont discontinuous at the point x equals 0. Well, guess what? x equals 0 is in this interval. Therefore, the mean 
mean value theorem does not apply right now. Mean value theorem does not apply because of that discontinuity in the interval. Now, however, if I said positive 1 instead of negative 1, how would that change? Well, it is still discontinuous at this point, but that point is not part of the interval we're worried about. So we don't have to worry about that discontinuity right now. We can just go and say, well, okay, we can now solve the problem because it's continuous and we can take a derivative on that interval. So, we'll do the same thing we did before. We're going to do f of 1 and f of 2. When we do f of 1, it'll be 2 over 1, which is 2. When I do 2, it'll be 3 over 2. So, same thing. First, we're going to see the slope of a secant line. The slope of the secant line, we'll do 2 minus 3 halves up top. On bottom then, it would have to be 1 minus 2. So, I'll have something over negative 1. This will be 1 half over negative 1, or negative 1 half as my slope. So, what I want to do from there is say the same thing. I'm going to say 1, or negative 1 over 2, will be equal to my f prime of x, my derivative function. Take the derivative of this, it will be quotient rule. So, low d high, start from the bottom, low d high, minus high d low, all over low squared. So, same thing, we're going to set it equal to negative 1 half. x times 1 is x. I need to distribute this negative. So, I'm going to have a negative x and a negative 1. x minus x minus 1. Minus x minus 1 over x squared. It means negative 1 half will equal, those x's go away, negative 1 over x squared. I can cross multiply, or I can even see, well, my numerators are the same. That means that they're equal, my denominators need to be the same. So 2 will have to equal x squared. I'm going to take the square root of both sides. Um, plus or minus the square root of 2 is equal to x. So I have two possible answers here. Now here's the thing. Which one of these is in the interval? It could be both of them. But in this case, the only one that's in the interval is a positive square root of 2. So positive square root of 2 is what we should be looking at as the uh, answer for our mean value theorem because the negative is actually not in, um, not in the interval that we care about. So ignore the negative in this case, because we need to have a positive number to be in that interval.